So I was looking up in the sky for Santa. And kids, I think I saw his sleigh go by the moon. So I think you best be on your best behavior. Santa will soon be by your house. I conf I'm confirming it. I mean, I have a 14-inch telescope, guys. Don't worry, Santa's on his way. Um, one of the reindeers looks like he's a little sick or maybe possibly even absent, but I am I have no confirmation. We are now in the constellation of Lyra. People are like, oh, that's it. Tell the kids Santa's not going by. No, he is going by. Don't worry. He was uh, whizzing by with a smile, I'm sure. If I had a 16, I would have been able to see that smile. Constellation of Lyra. Orion is an amazing constellation, but there are many other constellations that have just breathtaking art in it and for me space is art you know look how beautiful these objects are guys when you look at this object this one for example the tiny speck that you're seeing way out there this one looks like an eyeball look at that well these systems some of them are bigger than our galaxies do you understand and no matter how far you zoom out of our solar system or any solar system it will always show up as a spotted light or sphere you know this is called a star and you look at it closely is it a star do you think no guys there are hundreds of systems around it and say to yourself in each of these little systems that you are seeing around this big star that they call a star inside of this system there's another system like the one you're looking at could be even be bigger depending on how far away it is if you see a very small speck of a star like the one on the bottom it's red the one over top is twice the size but the little red one is twice as hot the colors indicate the temperatures of the surface of each star and this is how scientists work and find out the temperatures as a guideline. The Kepler Space Telescope discovered 62F, which is a small rocky planet that orbits a K2 dwarf star in the Lyra constellation. I don't know if all the constellations have meteor showers, they must. But the Lyrid in Lyra meteor showers occur in the month of April. April 22nd to be exact, basically it's observed. The meteors move outwards from a location in the sky. This location is referred to as the Radiant, which lies in the Lyra constellation. So this is pretty interesting. A lot of facts that not everyone knows about Lyra. Where is Lyra, by the way? Just to give you a heads up, nobody really knows what needs to know the ascension. You can see it in the sky, but it's plus 90 degrees and minus 40 degrees. It comprises six stars called Alpha Lyrae, Vega, Beta Lyrae, Sheliac, Gamma Lyrae, Sulafat, Delta II Lyrae, Double Star, Eppelson, Double Double, and Zeta Lyrae. Sounds like they're ordering a coffee at Tim Horton or something. Lyra constellation. Um, first of all, Lyra, the constellation, belongs to the Hercules family of constellations. And Lyra contains two Messier objects. We have Messier 56, uh, which is also known as NGC 6779, and there's Messier 57, also known as NGC 6720, the Ring Nebula. It has nine stars with known planets. The brighter star in the constellation, of course, is Vega, also known as Alpha Lyrae. Some amazing news, guys. I've been so busy. You've all heard of the asteroid Oumuamua? Project Lyra, a mission, was created somehow to chase down that interstellar asteroid. Why are they calling it an interstellar asteroid? This asteroid Oumuamua, which was, by the way, the 2017 U1 that they announced, formerly, thinking it was a comet, now an asteroid, metal rich. Project Lyra, a mission to chase down that interstellar asteroid. It is now on its way back to, yes, the constellation of Lyra, deep interstellar space, and it came from what they believe in the proximities of the star 
Vega. Observations of the asteroid's orbit have also revealed that it made its closest pass to our Sun back in September of 2017. It is currently on its way back to interstellar space. Because of the mysteries of this body holds, there are those who are advocating that it be intercepted and explored. One such group is Project Lyra, which recently released a study detailing the challenges and benefits of such a mission and what it would present. The study, which recently appeared online under the title Project Lyra, sending a spacecraft to Oumuamua, former A2017 U1, the interstellar asteroid, was conducted by members of the Initiative for Interstellar Studies, a volunteer organization that is dedicated a volunteer organization making interstellar space travel a reality in the near future. The study was supported by Asteroid Initiatives, LLC, an asteroid prospecting company that is dedicated to facilitating the exploration and commercial exploitation. Where and what is interstellar space exactly? We all say, oh, it's off to interstellar space. Well, what and where is it? In astronomy, the interstellar medium, also known as ISM, is the matter and radiation that exists in the space between the star systems in a galaxy. Uh, this matter includes gas in ionic, atomic, and molecular form, as well as dust and cosmic rays. It fills interstellar space and blends smoothly, smoothly into the surrounding intergalactic space. Now, what's intergalactic space? Never ending. You get so smart when you're researching in, in space and science. And, you know, you just can't help but remain up there. So, yeah, the OORT cloud, where we're talking about birthing stars, stars in formation, new stars, and star objects. Um, you know, the OORT cloud is actually in interstellar space or near it. Scientists define the beginning of interstellar space. They say it's where the sun's constant flow of material and magnetic field stop affecting its surroundings. This place is called the heliopause. It marks the end of a region created by our sun that is called the heliosphere. The sun creates this heliosphere by sending a constant flow of particles and a magnetic field out into space at over 670,000 miles per hour. This stream is called the solar winds. Like Earth, wind, this wind pushes against the stuff and everything that's out in space around it. What it pushes against are particles from other stars, pretty much anything that doesn't come from our own solar system. I believe interstellar space is the place and beginning of all creation, whether God is there or not, creation did come from that area in the nebulae. Um, you know, it's the birthplace of all stars. The regions of interstellar space were where clouds of cold molecular and atomic hydrogen are present, can form stars through gravitational attraction over hundreds of millions years. Interstellar space is mostly empty guys. 99% of the material in that area is gas. The other is 1% dust, roughly 90% um, of the atoms in the gas being hydrogen, 9% helium and 1% heavier elements. those who celebrate Christmas, I'd like to wish you a very happy Merry Christmas and season's greetings. Tomorrow, a couple of way, hours away, Christmas will be here. So what do I do? Do I stay up late and make videos? Of course I will. I'm going to stay up all night, guys, for you. And I want to stay up with you. And that's what I'll be doing. You know, so much so so much that we see up there in the sky there are many people um, showing things up in the sky like steve olson for example wso youtube channel check him out 